All right. <clears throat> this is the eye of Aten. These are the symbols, words, and numbers associated with it. And this is the wizard who is going to be breaking it all down, explaining it all for you. I want to bro like broadly divide this into, into four major sections, right? The first thing I want to explain is the words, because I think that's <clears throat> more or less the most obvious thing to go with. That's the first question you're going to ask is, what does this say? The second thing I want to expound here is the symbol itself. What is the Aten? Who was its main propagator and how did it come to be one of, if not the most prominent symbol in all of symbology? The third thing I want to talk about is the central area here, which is the pyramid, right? So what does it represent? What are dark wizards, dark masons trying to do with it? And what are light wizards? What are the true masons trying to do here when it comes to this structure, the pyramid itself? Because there's this is where the main story of it all happens. And then lastly, what is going on with the numerology, the mathematics at the bottom in the Roman numerals? So the words are themselves. I'm not sure if you can see here. The camera resolution isn't too great. I don't have it very close because I kind of want to have me in the, in the frame here too. But the words anuit, coeptus are at the top and the words novus, ordo, seclorum are at the bottom. Now the top two words mean anoequeptus, meaning the approved construction. It's a favorable project that is being undertaken or worked at. The bottom section, Novus Order Seclorum, means new order of the world. This is often mistranslated as new order of the ages, but that would be cyclorum, not seclorum. It's a big difference there. So the approved construction of the new order of the world. How is this being done? What is happening? And what is the new world order? Because this is a very important thing to discuss. What is happening here is, again, this central symbol and the Aten at the top of the pyramid. So what was Aten? What is Aten to this day? Uh, the important thing to note is who came, well, not who came up with it, but who re widely propagated this symbol. And I'll explain that by pointing out that there are 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 12, 13 courses of brick on this pyramid. Why 13? Because that's a very important number. The reason it's 13 is because it was the 13th dynasty in ancient Egypt when a foreign race of people came out of Egypt and stole, appropriated, however you want to put it, the pharaonic throne for themselves from the native population. Right? This is not widely talked about, but in the future it will be talked about much more widely, that is for sure. Because the race of people known as the Hyksos came in, again, took the pharaonic throne for themselves and made it about themselves. And this lasted for about 300 years to roughly the 18th to 19th dynasty, depending upon the turn of events that took place. And amongst the last and most powerful and megalomaniacal of these Hyksos pharaohs was Akhenaten, or spirit of the Aten. And this pharaoh is most notable to most people, and if you know the name at all, you know it because this was the propagator of monotheism. He, Akhenaten, brought about a rule in Egypt to monotheism, and that was specifically the monotheism to the, he, the god that he worshipped called Aten. That's just why his name is Spirit of the Aten, right? He conspired to tear down all of, shut down all of the ancient temples in, in Egypt to Thot, to Mayat, to Osiris, to Ra, Amun-Ra, all of those ancient gods that they had been worshiping. And because again, remember, this is a foreign 
bloodline. These were not native Egyptians. These were people who conquered Egypt and took control of the government for their own purposes, right? And Akhenaten established this form of monotheism and as I have said, he was amongst the last to even be there because it was the native Egyptian Horemheb who rose up, took back the throne for the Egyptians along with the people and cast Akhenaten and all of his Levitical Hyksos followers because it was the priesthood known as the Levitical priesthood, the Levites who appointed Akhenaten as the pharaoh because sometimes it was the priests appointing the pharaoh other times it was the pharaoh appointing the priests but it was because of this that he was eventually thrown out of egypt so the aten was the god of akhenaten and akhenaten is the main propagator of this solar god concept so what was he working at well, when I tell you what he was working at, well, this is the pyramid here, as you can see, of course. It, it is an incomplete pyramid. The capstone is missing, and there's a space in between his god and the work that he was doing. Now, he was the most evil, genius, most powerful wizard who has ever lived by an order of magnitude. In fact, he almost surely went by an alias at one point after he was kicked out of Egypt called Moses. And this idea is not original to me. In fact, uh, Sigmund Freud in 1934 wrote a paper speculating that Akhenaten was Moses, that Moses was an alias, or that at the very uh, best, one of Akhenaten's followers was Moses. Now the reason, uh, why did Moses erect a brazen serpent in the middle of the desert, right? Because the, the serpent was the symbol of the pharaoh, right? The, the pharaoh had that, that, you know, the serpent on the front of the headdress because he was a pharaoh. And after he and his coterie, his foreign coterie, who had ruled for 300 years, were kicked out finally of Egypt, he couldn't operate under his original name, so use an alias. Again, this isn't 100% historical proven. But the other thing to think about is that the symbol also, the, the two main symbols of the pharaoh were the serpent and the lion, because these were the original lion kings, right? The original lion kings. And think about the house of Judea, the tribe of Judea. Their symbol is the symbol of the lion. This is all pervading. You know, it, it goes way beyond even Akhenaten, because this... This monotheistic push affected everything going forward. All of the great, the three great Abrahamic faiths all owe their existence to Akhenaten and the fact that he was kicked out and was jealous and was like, I need the rest of the world if I can't have Egypt, right? So the symbol of Venice and the Vatican are the lion. When the Queen of England is coronated, she does it on a throne whose legs are four statues of lions. The lion, this is uh, the, the priests would wear the cheetah or the jaguar or the panther skin. But the lion was always reserved for the pharaoh. Why is the house of Judah of, of the symbol of the lion? Because Akhenaten was... Moses, and Moses was a pharaoh of Egypt. <laughs> There's a reason why the pharaoh at the time of the Exodus is never referred to by specifically name. It's just the pharaoh, right? Okay, so this is very important. And what was the work he was doing? Well, the Aten in the original conception, because and but even before I get to that, uh, think about Yahweh or Allah, right? Uh, Muhammad ascended to the sun to commune with God, Aten, the solar god of the ancient Egypt of the ancient Egyptians, right? Jesus Christ was died on the cross, went down for three days, and then was resurrected. This is this comes from the fact that it's the sun that's doing this. The sun sets on the Crux constellation for three days, the 23rd, 24th, 25th. 
and then it goes back. So you're talking about the same overarching solar god. Now, very few Christians, very few Muslims know this. The, the, the group of people most in the know are the, the Masonic order. Uh, quite a few Freemasons will know about this, although they generally don't talk about it. Um, it's really only the high ranking, like the 32nd, 33rd order Masons who know about this. In fact, uh, M-A-S-O-N. Uh, that's if you put the uh, actually I'll, I'll superimpose it really quick uh, we should superimpose that so you can see the mason there um, if you superimpose the masonic triangle and compass uh, excuse me the um, the carpenter square and the compass symbol on top of this symbol you'll find that it connects the the five letters m-a-s-o-n right so so the masonic order knows this the most and they have in the truest sense, preserve the quote-unquote true religion, right? Because the other Abrahamic interpretations are strictly that. They're, they're permutations. They're sullied forms of the true, again, the true religion that has been preserved by the highest order of Masons in the world, that of Akhenaten, the spirit of the Aten. And... The work that's being done here is the Aten represents knowledge, represents wisdom, enlightenment. However, there are two sides. Knowledge can be used to be more effectively evil and knowledge can be used to be more effectively good. And that is a huge problem because it means the dark side of light is to use light. It is to use knowledge against people. And that's what this pyramid represents. This pyramid represents the work of the dark masons. The work, like this is a cult of death eaters. This is a cult of evil wizards who for the past three and a half thousand years, ever since the 13th dynasty in Egypt, have been constructing a pyramid. They have been creating a work in progress to block out the light of knowledge from all people of all creation. So they are building with these bricks. The bricks represent people. They are building with individuals, with ideas, with knowledge to block out the light of wisdom from the world. And when they succeed, you notice it's, again, it's not done, but their goal is to finish this and to block out light to keep all of the world bathed in ignorance. That is what this central area is dealing with, this work in progress. Now, it is the work of the good wizards. It is the work of the good masons, the, the true bringers of light to the world to raise this pyramid to the earth, to get rid of it, to completely take it down brick by brick by brick by brick by brick until we get to the point of where all of the world is ready and does, in fact, see all wisdom, right? We are representing all knowledge, including the knowledge of ethics, the knowledge of economics, the knowledge of the realms of human inquiry, which have been deliberately suppressed and kept from us over and over and over again for the profitability of evil, right? So we remove this ignorance, this pyramid of ignorance, which is what that represents, and we allow the true light side, right, the, the, the Jedi side, not the Sith side, to come in and to bathe the world in knowledge and in light. That is incredibly important. And the people, all of the, the, the Christians, the Muslims, the Jews, the government, people who are constantly working to kill, right, you can't handle the truth. Right? The people who want you to be ignorant, right? they are working on this. Right? So all of the Abrahamic faiths, the, the systems of government and bureaucracy which keep us in ignorance, that is their project, whether they know it or not, whether they even want to admit it or not. And, and as I said, the Masonic order knows this the best, but of the other Abrahamic ideas, right, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the Jews are definitely the most then besides that in the know. 
the Masonic order has the most knowledge, has preserved most accurately the true religion of Akhenaten, of the spirit of the Aten, of Atenism, worshiping this solar god. That, but, and the, here's the thing, is that a true rabbinical Jew will never say Voldemort's name. They just won't do it. You, you, you can push them, and if you push them, first of all, most of them won't know. But the ones that do know, if you do push them on it, they will always and forever fall back to the name, not Aten, but Adonai. Because they know better than the Christians, they know better than the Muslims, that the Abrahamic tradition is nothing but a mockery and a copyright claim on this work. And they don't want to say Aten because then it will reveal the fact it, it, it brings forward all of this knowledge. It starts the dominoes down, right? It's the beginning of the rabbit hole, right? So you don't, they don't want to even mention its name. They call it Adonai because it can be referred to as the Aten or the Aton, A-T-E-N or A-T-O-N. And the T becomes a D in Hebrew, Adon, I, I, get it. It's the I, and they don't want you to know about this, or they don't even want themselves. They, they wish they could go back into the matrix and just take this knowledge away from themselves, right? The, the, and then the Christians very, oh my goodness, even sophisticated. I don't even think I can find no reference to anyone like um, Dennis Prager. I, I can't find any reference to even Jordan Peterson, who is an incredibly sophistic uh, Christian, they don't know about this God, and, and every now and then, some of them will have looked into the symbology behind it, but they really can't narrow it all down. Not in the way that the Jews or the the Masons can. And as far as I mean, I would, as far as Muslims are concerned, I would even want to know if the Ayatollah Khomeini were, were aware of this being. I don't know. Maybe maybe he was aware of the Aten and the role, because right as I said, you know. Uh, Muhammad ascended to to the sun to commune with God on a winged horse. And he called it Allah, but he the the true name is Aten. It's that's the real God we're talking about. The, the quote unquote the real God, the original ancestral monotheistic solar concept, right? I'm trying to tie this all to the three Abrahamic faiths including excluding uh Masonry, which again, this is what has mostly preserved the conception of Atenism in its truest conceptual form. These are the great secrets that the 33rd and the 32nd Free Order Masons know about, right? They don't want you to know that Moses was an alias for Atenism, that he erected graven images, quote unquote, graven images to the serpent and the lion, the house of Judah, to tie back to the fact that he was a pharaoh and he was tremendously jealous and resentful at having been kicked out despite the fact that his rule of the Hyksos was always a foreign illegitimate, I mean all rule is illegitimate, but it had no native basis for it. There was no native basis. So the good wizards, the true masons, again, uh, I'm going to be wrapping this up here, getting to the fourth part, which is the numerology of it all. But the job of the good wizards is to bathe the world in light by removing the pro And you can tell that the dark wizards have been kicking ass forever, right? They, they are way in the lead. But we wake people up one person at a time, one brick at a time. This structure goes away. And the whole world has light. The whole world has knowledge. The whole world is bathed in the true idea of Aten as a light bringer. This is the Gnostic conception of the Luciferian, right? The Jesus was a Luciferian. Mary Magdalene was a Luciferian. These people were light bringers. Uther, Uther from the blizzard conception of Warcraft is a direct reference to Lucifer. His last name is Lightbringer. His name may as well as be Luthifer. Right, because he, the truest concept, because Satan, although okay, I don't believe in any of this, but Satanism and Luciferianism are very different things, and very few people, including of course the people who have no idea what Atenism is, will not know this. They don't know. They're they're bathed in the dark side of the sun, 
And so they don't know that bringing light, Luciferianism, is much closer to Christianity than it is to Satanism. Or for Aten or if you want to get into the true conception of, of Satanism, not as its sort of pagan slash nature slash do what feels right as an animal conception, but Satanism as an evil conception. That is Atonism. The moment Atonism, the moment monotheism in terms of this tradition shows up, the world is bathed in bloodshed and war and darkness. And it's not as if ancient Egypt were perfect without this, but it survived for a very long time, very well intact without it. That is for sure. And the moment it shows up, instantaneous problems occur of a huge order. No pun intended. So the last thing we're going uh, we're going to talk about here is the numerology of it all. Because because you, you okay. So you're like Eric. This is all well and good, but you know, I mean, this sounds a lot. This sounds very speculative. I mean, I get why you would be saying that Moses was a, an alias to Akhenaten, a jealous pharaoh who had foreign credentials, kicked out, and then was incredibly upset about it right but can you give me some real solid proof here like maybe some mathematical proof would be good no i think that's a little far-fetched but i'm going to do it anyway you just you just you wait just you wait because the number at the bottom of this pyramid again you probably can't see it because of the resolution of the camera but please pull <laughs> pull a dollar bill out of your wallet and you can see it this this is the most powerful god ever created by mankind all other gods are paltry by con by conception or by conception nothing but an offshoot in a pretty bad carbon copy of the aten right yahweh shiva baal allah so many different gods are just offshoots of this. Moloch, they can all be traced back. Now, the East traditions are fairly different, but you might say, okay, well, and again, we're going to get to the mathematics in a second, but like, okay, so it's not, okay, if you call this the most powerful god that's ever lived, you know, that's ever been part of human conception, well, it's not as if the Aten is in control of monetary policy in China. Yeah, it is. Okay, so to this day, right? To this very day, and it's probably not for much longer, but to this very day, the yuan, the Chinese currency, is pegged to the Aten, to the Federal Reserve note, to the dollar. The Aten, by, by pegged, what I mean is it's at a fixed exchange rate. So however... However the Fed is moving in terms of its monetary supply and policy, however the Aten is deciding the fate of the world, so too will move the Chinese Central Bank. The Aten does set monetary policy in China. That is the power of this deity. Even this is the most worshipped, the most adored, the most propagated, and by far the most important God in all of human thought, in all of human creation, in all of human making stuff up to control the world. This is the power that rules the world. Think about who is. Think about all the people who are motivated by nothing but purely the gain of this symbol. They are, motiv mo they are motivated by nothing but getting money. And there's nothing. I have nothing wrong with materialism. At its heart, there's nothing wrong with owning nice things or whatnot, but people don't enjoy pleasure for its own sake. They use it as a means to avoid sadness and depression. They think it's happiness, and they think the Aten is happiness. But the Aten just represents knowledge, and it is used for evil and good. And the evil wizards, the evil masons, the death eaters outnumber the Dumbledores, 100 to 1, probably much higher than that, probably way higher than that, which speaking before I get to the mathematics, two fellow good wizards uh, that I owe a great deal of knowledge to this video itself are Mark Passio, which I'll get to in a moment, 
uh, who I will get to in a moment in terms of because this is where the exposition of the mathematics gets uh, gets shown. Uh, his uh, case study of Geometria is uh, what I'll I'll quote as being the original source of this, but also uh, Michael Tsarion, uh, who, in addition to Freud, has been very much deeply expounding the connection to Akhenaten and the uh, the Abrahamic tradition. So the case study of this uh, geometria. Now geometria is a is a combination of symbology and mathematics. And here we go. So I'm going to superimpose some stuff again, uh, images to replace myself with some images. But you have again at the bottom of the pyramid on the first layer out of the thirteen again representing the thirteen the thirteenth dynasty or the thirteen elite bloodlines is M D C C L X X V I. Now, in total, this comes to 1776, right? This is the great, the great seal of the United States of America. So the 1776 shouldn't be that surprising. Now, what will be very surprising, and I hope to just frickin' explode your frickin' dome on this one, when I heard this, when I saw this shit, my fucking dome went ballistic. So... Let's take, this, this is the, the study of Geomatria, uh, let's take the MDCCLXXVI and let's, there's nine, of, nine Roman numerals, three pyramids at the top, and we're going to go top, left, right, top, left, right, top, left, right. Simple, right? So M at the top, D, C at the bottom of the first pyramid, C at the top, L, X, at the bottom of the second pyramid, X at the top, V, I at the bottom of the third pyramid. Now, when you translate these, you get 1,110. And then if you add the numbers up, you get six on the farthest right, the, the V and the I make six, the, and then the next one you get 60 and then 600. So I went left to right at the top, right to left at the bottom. So the top, which is 1,110, these in mathematics are known as powers of a 10. Do you get it? Do you see how? <laughs> they are fucking with you. Powers of a 10. Because no matter how you look at it, whether it's 1,000, 100, or 10, the powers of Aten are always at the top of the pyramid. And you might notice there's something else going on the bottom side of there, and I'll leave that up to you to figure out what that is. So in conclusion, the good wizards of the world are dealing with the power, the residual power of the most evil wizard who has ever lived, Akhenaten, a.k.a. Moses, but that was just a, an alias. You ever notice how, like, evil wizards use aliases all the time? But anyway, so the good wizards here, as I said, this work has been a long, long, long time being won by the Death Eaters of the world. Fortunately, though, the spellcrafting nature of the good wizards has delivered to us beautiful magical objects like the camera, like the internet, like the microphone. All of these things have allowed us to spread the good side, the light side of what the Aten represents, bringing light to the world, bringing knowledge to the world, because this is a symbol of all knowledge, all knowledge especially the areas of knowledge which have been deliberately known uh, which have been long known and deliberately suppressed most importantly ethics and second to that economics so we have been we have to cuz people i mean geniuses of the world understand mathematics and biology and chemistry and all this wonderful good stuff but again, to understand, to, to bring together everything into a coherent idea of conception of history and, and ethics and, and what religion is, what government is, what 
money, quote unquote money, is what currency has been when in terms of it's been imposed upon us as this all pervading. I mean, this symbol is on every continent on earth. It is in every, it is in basically every city on earth. As I said earlier, no other God even comes close. Nothing. Come, Atonism has been unknown and kicking the world's ass forever, including the conceptions of the religions it has left in its wake. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and Masonism being the big four. Although Masonism claims to not be a religion, it's kind of hard to avoid it, but oh well. The, the, the Masonic... The Masonic motto, one of their mottos is per me regnes regna. It means through me all kings will reign. Now if you're a member of the Masonic order and you're not like way fucking up at the top, have you have you ever wondered what that who not what it means because you've probably been told what it means, but have you ever wondered who me is? It's not you. It's that guy. So the motto of the Masonic order may as well be through Aten all kings will reign. Thank you very much for your time.